first example is at elske. Now, at elske is of course to love. And you can see here that I wrote verb, right? So at elske to love. But what if it's love as a concept? Then it's kærlighed. All right. So at elske to love and en kærlighed, a love. All right. It's very important that you know this because otherwise you might end up making some very strange sentences in Danish. And like I always say, it's okay to make mistakes, but these are pretty easy to avoid once you know the rules. So let's see what we got. Some examples. Uh, hun elsker kun dig. Hun elsker kun dig. She only loves you. Now, of course, you already know that elsk is love, but also you can see that it's a verb because there's that R. Like, hun elsker. Hun, as a personal pronoun, she. Like, elsker, that is a verb in the present tense. Hun elsker kun dig. It's pretty easy. Or this one. Du må aldrig glemme kærligheden. Du må aldrig glemme kærligheden. You must never forget love. Like the love. This is kind of dramatic, but it's just to make a point. And so, kærlighed, kærlighed, then. And because it's en kærlighed, so it becomes kærlighed, then. Don't say den kærlighed, like the love or la amor or something like that. No, 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 no. It's at the end. Okay, at the end is where you have the en or the et to make the, like the love. Okay, I'm moving a little bit fast because that one is pretty easy. What about the next one? At sove. Hmm, at sove is to sleep. The verb, right? At sove. So that's pretty simple. Then you have sown or in sown. A sleep, right? So sleep as a noun. Not asleep, but a sleep. Yeah, that is sown. And then you have sony. Sony is sleepy, right? So that's the adjective. Now it's kind of easy when you look at it because so it ends with an e. So already by that you know that it's infinitive. Like at so to sleep. So uh, maybe a little bit tricky. If you haven't seen it before, it could be a little bit annoying. But um, that is how it ends. So ni. Now what's interesting here is it ends with ig. We have many adjectives in Danish that end with ig, or dig, or lig, or just ig. That's a very common way to end adjectives. Not all, don't be angry if you find some that aren't, of course there are many that are not, but it is a very common way to end adjectives. And again, it's important that you also know how these uh, operate or interact with each other. So you don't use sown when you're supposed to say so or sony when you're supposed to say sown because the listener, the native Danish speaker who's not a teacher, they might not have the patience or the whatever <laughs> capacity in that moment to like listen through the mistakes. Like, so it's better if you get it straight and you know uh, the right word, like the right word class. So some examples. Sover han lige nu? Sover han lige nu? Is he sleeping right now? Sover han lige nu? Again, that's present tense. You got the R. Sover han lige nu? <laughs> okay. Søvn er noget, vi alle har brug for. Søvn er noget, vi alle har brug for. Sleep is something we all need. Right? Sown er noget. And noget means something. And I know many of you, you have a hard time with noget, nogen, and nogle. And I'm gonna comment on that someday in more detail. But for now, just look at this as something. It's something unspecified. Sown er noget. Okay, so that was the noun, sown, sleep as a noun. Du ser lidt søvnig ud. Du ser lidt søvnig ud. You look a little sleepy, or you seem a little sleepy. Okay, so yeah, du ser da 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 ud, you look something, in this case, sleepy. Right? Sony. Ha, du ser lidt sony ud. Like that. 
Okay, the next one, what we got? Mm, we got at opleve, at opleve, to experience the verb. You got en oplevelse, or in a more natural way, en oplevelse, oplevelse, that's an experience, right? the noun. So it's annoying because in English it's the same word, experience, experience. But uh, it's pretty uh, important in Danish that you get it right. If you say like, "Jeg øh, vil have en, jeg vil have en og vi skal opleve det så like, oh, 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 it's just not good, right? So be aware of how it ends because it has this this like LSE ending. You can be pretty sure that it's a noun, and there are many words like that. So this is not an exception. Like this is not something rare. You're gonna see it many times. This uh, LSE ending. Uh, some examples. Jeg vil gerne opleve noget nyt. Jeg vil gerne opleve noget nyt. I want to experience something new. Right? It's pretty straightforward. Right? Vi gerne opleve noget nyt. Yeah? Det var en god oplevelse. Det var en god oplevelse. Ja, det var en god oplevelse. It was a good experience. In the future, I'm going to cover erfaring as well. Because erfaring, I can write it here as a quick note. Erfaring also means experience, but more like accumulated experience. And so some of you might be thinking about that right now. Like, hey, Thomas, you left something out. Uh, that's kind of intentional. But we'll get to that someday in more detail. Then we got, I'm too high here, at betyde. At betyde. <laughs> You'll never hear someone say this like at betyde, but anyway, to mean, eh? like the meaning of something, like a word. So that is the verb. You say, en betydning, like, en betydning, that is meaning or significance like, of something, that's the noun. And then betydelig, or betydelig is significant as an adjective. Okay, so again, look at the ending. It's li. Betyde ends with an e. Okay, straightforward. That's verb. Right? Infinitive. Betydning. You might not know it yet, but many nouns, they end with ning or ing. Right? So keep that in mind. Hvad betyder det ikke? Betydning betyder li. Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's look at the examples. Hvad betyder det ord? Hvad betyder det ord? What does that word mean? And on a little side note, um, I know many of you have problems because you want to say "hvad mener det or and like "mean mener ja mener" is also a thing, but that's more like what you're trying to say. Uh, Thomas, hvad det du mener? What is it you mean? Or like you're serious about what you're saying. Jeg mener det. I mean it. So that is a different way to use that verb and just to. Uh, prevent any misunderstandings. Betyder is the meaning of something. Så, hvad betyder det ord? What does that word mean? Symbolet har en betydning. Symbolet har en betydning. The symbol has a meaning or significance. Right? Symbolet. Symbolet har en betydning. Very nice. Det gør en betydelig forskel. Det gør en betydelig forskel. It makes a significant difference. Right? A difference that means something. Again, you have that li. Pay attention to that. Okay, moving on. We got here, we got at skrive. At skrive og skrive, but we almost never say skrive, so skrive is fine. At skrive to write. Right? To write something. As that is the verb, and then you got in skrift or in skrift is writing. I think that's the noun, and then skriftly, skriftly is written. That's the adjective. Hmm. Okay, let's see. Jeg skriver en besked til ham. Jeg skriver en besked til ham. I'm writing him a message, or I'm going to write him a message. So, skriver, right? That's just the present tense of skrive. At skrive, 
jeg skriver. That's that. Of course, the verb. Lad os få det på skrift. Lad os få det på skrift. Let's get it in writing. Now I was thinking about lawyers or something like that when I wrote this sentence. Right? So, you know, you want to make it official, you put it in writing. På skrift. Mm-hmm. Dette er en skriftlig opgave. Dette er en skriftlig opgave. This is a written assignment. Right? So like in school, skriftly is when you're writing and mundly, you can write that here as a little bonus, Mundly is the verbal, like, or maybe some people say oral. <laughs> I'm not sure, to be honest. But yeah, so skriftly is when you write, and mundly is when you speak. Right? It's good for exam and exam. So that was a little run through. Uh, of course, there's a lot more to cover. So now we're gonna go to this little text that I have. I took it f- from one of my stories, of which I have written many. Um, and basically, I marked the adjectives, nouns, and verbs to make it easier. Adjectives are marked with blue, verbs are marked with red, and nouns are marked with green. Let's see if I got them all. Of course, I'm only human. I might have missed one or two. But let's start with the adjectives. Okay, so adjectives, we got to look for what's blue. Like I'll analyze the entire text afterwards. Let's just focus on the words for now. Molus, like molus, that is speechless. Like of course the plural, because if it's singular, there is no e. Like molus. So dear molus, they are speechless. Okay, and then we got faster. And faster means first. Like faster. Over here you got the show. Show, which means fun or funny. Show. Mærkelig or mærkelig, but again, in real life, people tend to say mærkelig. We kind of omit the e. Mærkelig, mærkelig. Weird, strange, odd. Dejlig. <laughs> Dejlig. You should all know this. Nice, lovely. Mm-hmm. Svært. Svært. Difficult, hard, tricky. Mm, svært. Rectit. Rectit. Really, true, real. Rectit. Or right. Could also mean right. Eneste. Eneste. Only. As in only one. Okay. So we did the adjectives. Now let's take a look at the verbs. I might not do all the er, like er, er. Uh, because it is a verb, but you see it so many times, it gets a little bit redundant. Let's just take a few of them. Er, and of course that's uh, am, r, is. Er, ved, ved, no, to know something. I know, I don't know. Ved, ved, skal, skal, many translations, but basically have to, must, should, or going to. Shall, what shall you? Ah, skal. Sige. Sige. Say. Er. Am, R is. Let's not do that again. Ser. Ser. See. Ser. See something. Go. Go, walk, go, go, can, 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 mærke, mærke, feel, sense, fatter, fatter. Fathom, get, grasp, understand. Fatter. Seer. Seer. Says, or say, yeah, we already have that. Skal seer. 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 Same. Seer. Kenner. Kenner. 
no knows right the one that knows the way kenna see ya again come so come come skal right? yeah have to must should shall going to fill ya fill ya follow fanga fanga catches or captures catch capture okay now let's take the nouns we got the uh, gang gang means time like unit of time ves in spanish uh, kai in japanese liu liu life sen Sen. Sand. <laughs> Len. Len. Land or country. That's an English matter. How you translate it. Sanel. Sanel. The sand. Oh, not this. Further. Further. Feet. Plural. Fuller. 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 But nobody bothers to say that. It's more like fuller. Fuller. Again, fuller. Same here. Means feeling. Fuller. Fuller. Is. Is. Is is ice. Or ice cream, depending on context. Is. Bro. Bro. Brother. Bro. Vain. Vain. Way. Road. Skoven. Skoven. Woods. Forest. Vai. Vai. Also way a road, but Vai was the way or the road. Right? This is just Vai, way road. Way road. <laughs> Brødre. Brødre. That's uh, brothers. Opmærksomhed. Opmærksomhed. Attention. Okay, now that took some time, and I know it wasn't exactly super fun, but it is good to be meticulous and really go through it and analyze it. So, Jens og Peter er helt målløse. De ved ikke, hvad de skal sige. Jens and Peter are totally speechless. They don't know what to say. Det er første gang nogensinde i deres liv, at de ser sand. It's the first time ever in their life or lives that they see sand. De går i land og kan mærke sandet under deres fødder. Det er en sjov følelse. They, how do you say that in English? They go to land, they enter land, from water to land, and can feel the sand underneath their feet. It is a funny feeling. Det er en mærkelig, men dejlig følelse. It is a strange, but nice feeling. Det er lidt svært at fatte, at der slet ikke er noget is her, siger Peter. It is a little hard to fathom, or grasp, understand, that there is no ice here, slet ikke, not at all. There is no ice here at all, says Peter. Hans bror siger, det er rigtigt. His brother says, that's right. Katrine er den eneste, der kender vejen gennem skoven, så hun siger, Katrine is the only one who knows the way through the forest, so she says, Come, vi skal den her vej. Come, we have to go this way. De to brødre følger efter hende, men lige pludselig er der noget andet. Spørgsmål der. The two brothers follow her, but suddenly 
there is something else, som fanger deres opmærksomhed, that catches or captures their attention. You want to find out the word class. You want to do it when you're reading, like you're trying to understand Danish, but also when you have to make your own sentences, because otherwise you might end up making some very strange sentences. And like I said before in the beginning, it's okay to make mistakes, but they're pretty easy to avoid if you just pay attention. Right? So yeah, notice all the R's here. Like Fulja follows, fanger, captures, or catches. So yeah. Mm, anything to say about the nouns? Yeah, noun can, can be a little bit tricky. It's more like, it's probably not a verb, probably not an adjective. Then there's a good chance that it's a noun. Right? Fulse, that's an easy one, because you also had um, oplevelse. Right? There's also inlevelse, tilværelse. Many, many nouns that end with uh, this uh, LSE. Sen, fødder, mm, skoven, and then you know, because it's skoven, and en skov becomes skoven. Vejen, mm-hmm. brødre, that's clearly a plural, although it's a little bit tricky, because bror becomes brødre. Maybe that's not so straightforward <laughs> for a learner. Opmærksomhed. Opmærksomhed is a good word. I, I of course, like it, because it's kind of my field, but also because hill is a very common suffix, or it's a very common way to end nouns when it's the concept of something. If I took out the hill, it would just be opmærksom. And opmærksom means attentive, and like you pay attention. Um, but you know, sometimes you need to say opmærksomhed, you need to say attention. So then you make this. Hill is very uh, common, you will see it a lot. I have some examples further down this document. So uh, yeah, really keep that in mind. Something, something, hill. Right? Okay, so let's continue with some more vocabulary. What we got? We got this one. At interessere, interessere sig for, to be interested in, verb. En interesse, an interest, a noun. Interessant, interesting, the adjective. Right? Interessant, interessere, interessere sig for, interesse, interessant. They are different. So let's see. Hvad er det, du interesserer dig for? Hvad er det, du interesserer dig for? What is it you're interested in? Right? Or have uh, taken an interest in. Hvad er det, du interesserer dig for? Det interesserer mig ikke. Det interesserer mig ikke. It doesn't interest me. Right? So there's a little difference here. Like if I say jeg interesserer mig for, is like I'm the subject, right? like I'm being active in having an interest in that thing. But here I'm more like an object. Right? Det interesserer mig ikke. It doesn't have my interest. You could almost translate that. It doesn't interest me. Right? So, fortæl mig lidt om dine interesser. Fortæl mig lidt om dine interesser. Tell me a little bit about your interests. That's plural. Det var en meget interessant samtale. Det var en meget interessant samtale. It was a very interesting conversation. Right? Oh, meget interessant samtale. Yeah, so um, I think this is one where a lot of people, a lot of learners make, make mistakes with this one. You know, because they're so similar. I get it. I Interessere sig for interesse and interessant. It's easy to make a mistake with this one. But now you have seen this video, so uh, you have a better chance. You have a better chance of getting it right. Okay, let's move on. We got forskel. Oh, en forskel. A difference. Okay, so that is a difference, the noun. And then you got forskelli. Different, like the adjective. So, forskel and forskelli. Now, the pronunciation is also different, right? Forskel, forskelli, different stress. Hmm, what we're gonna do? Jeg ved ikke, hvad forskellen er. Jeg ved ikke, hvad forskellen er. I don't know what the difference is. Okay, so forskellen, the difference. Jeg ved ikke, hvad forskellen er. Pretty easy. 
Der findes mange forskellige sprog. Der findes mange forskellige sprog. There are many different languages. Like findes is like there is or are or it exists. It's out there. Der findes mange forskellige sprog. Hmm. Maybe some of you also wonder about this whole thing with forskellige and anderledes. I'll cover that some other day. And all I say for now is that forskellige usually implies that there is diversity. Right? So if you have plural, like many different things, you would generally say forskellige or forskellige. So that's all I'll say for now. Okay, then you got hemmelighed or en hemmelighed. Hemmelighed means secret, a secret. It's a noun. Hemmelighed. And then you got hemmelig. Hemmelig. <laughs> We often don't say the E. It's kind of annoying. Hemmelig. Hemmelig. Secret. The adjective. And uh, yeah, this is important. A little bonus info. Uh, many learners, they have problems with this for some reason. They say it as hjemlig or hjemmelighed. I think it's because you learn the word uh, hjem or hjemme, like home first. And then you just kind of add the J in there, even though it's not there. Uh, but yeah, don't do that. You know, it's uh, hemmelighed or hemli. There is no J, so it's just a regular H. <laughs> Hvad er din hemmelighed? Hvad er din hemmelighed? What is your secret? Ah, din hemmelighed. Hun er hemmelig agent. Hun er hemmelig agent. She is a secret agent. Okay. So again, hid, then you know it's a noun. Right? And hemmelig, hemmelig, then you know it's an adjective. It's kind of easy when you get used to it. Okay, så har vi, så har vi, ja, it can be a little bit tricky. At styrke, at styrke, 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 to strengthen, the verb. En styrke. A strength, the noun. Stark, stark, and to a stark, strong, the adjective. Yeah, so styrke, it's at styrke, en styrke, and stark. Det styrker vores forhold. Det styrker vores forhold. It strengthens our relationship. Okay, cool. Han kender ikke sin egen styrke. Han kender ikke sin egen styrke. He doesn't know his own strength, like uh, Hercules or something. Nej. Styrke. Hvor stærk er hun? Hvor stærk er hun? How strong is she? So yeah, look at that. Styrke. Like, styrke is both the verb and The noun. Styrke. Men stærk. Hmm. Stærke is the adjective. And stærk not only means strong, it also means, uh, like you say, jeg kører stærkt. Like I'm driving fast, or løber stærkt, running fast. And uh, spicy. So, you know, it's in there with your chili, or your whatever. It's like, oh, det er stærkt. Uh, rigtig stærkt. Spicy. All right. Then we got virkelighed, en virkelighed og virkelighed. But again, that e usually doesn't get pronounced. Virkelighed, så so reality, a reality, the noun, en virkelighed. Then you got virkelig og virkelig, virkelig, it's real, like the adjective. Vi lever ikke i den samme virkelighed. Vi lever ikke i den samme virkelighed. We don't live in the same reality. Now, I don't know when you need to say this, maybe matrix or something. <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine something. And so, virkelighed, again, with the hill. It's kind of easy when you see it again and again. Virkelighed, reality. But spøgelser er ikke virkelige. Spøgelser er ikke virkelige. And ghosts are not real. Because it's, it's the adjective. I mean, it's getting almost too easy at this point. Right? Spøgelser er ikke virkelige. That's that. And we got the 
ensomhed. Hmm. En ensomhed. A loneliness, the noun. Ensomhed. En ensom. Ensom. Lonely, the adjective. Ah, ensomhed er noget af det værste. Ensomhed er noget af det værste. Loneliness is one of the worst things, and like the worst things in life or in the world. Ensomhed er noget af det værste. Hmm. Once again, with the hill. Føler du dig ensom? Føler du dig ensom? Do you feel lonely? Me, me. Føler du dig ensom? That's that. Føler du dig ensom? Not so much to say. Let's just take the next one, which is ærlighed. Ærlighed. En ærlighed. Honesty. Noun. And you got ærlig. Ærlig. Honest. The adjective. Jeg sætter pris på din ærlighed. Jeg sætter pris på din ærlighed. I appreciate your honesty or your candor. Jeg sætter pris på din ærlighed. Det er ikke altid nemt at være ærlig. Det er ikke altid nemt at være ærlig. It's not always easy to be honest. Okay. Lige And you pretty much know that it's an adjective, and here then you can guess that it's a noun. Easy peasy. Okay, so that is ærlighed and ærlig. Now we move on. We got tænke, at tænke, at tænke, to think. So that is a verb. And then you got en tanke, en tanke, a thought, the noun. Of course, the spelling changes here, so that is pretty important. And I see many learners making this mistake of kind of being too liberal, too non-caring about which one they use. <laughs> But uh, it makes a difference. And actually, you could say, "Jeg tænker en tanke." I'm thinking a thought. Oh, jeg tænker mine tanker. Oh, hvad tænker du på? Jeg tænker på om oh, min tanke. Yeah, 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 stuff like that.